it, the conflict in Ukraine is having far-reaching consequences, causing violence to flare up as former Soviet countries take advantage of Russia's weakening influence in the region. And the violence has had major consequences for Christians living in the tiny country of Armenia. Chuck Holton is on this story. Just after midnight on September 13th, Azerbaijan launched a large-scale attack against its neighbor, Armenia. It's the latest battle in a long-running conflict between the Muslim-majority Azerbaijan and Armenia, a country that claims to be the world's first Christian nation. But the attacks on Sunday have more to do with money than with religion. It's the worst attack since 2020 when Nazari forces pushed into the exclave of Artsakh, taking lands populated by Armenians since the time of Noah. CBN was there to witness how the Azeri military put little stock in the value of civilian lives. So you see this car right here it was hit by cluster munitions. All of these little holes are from the thousands of projectiles that are thrown out by these things. They are definitely not meant for civilian areas. They're meant for troops in the open. The most recent attack looks to be no different. We have several civilians wounded. The attacks were not only against Armenian military positions, but there were attacks against Armenian civilian towns and villages. Several homes have been damaged, including municipal buildings. So it was an attack against military and civilian infrastructure. In the current conflict, Azeris aren't attacking a remote area, but Armenia proper. And the objectives have everything to do with the current war in Ukraine. People here in Armenia are understandably disturbed by the images they see coming out of Ukraine, but it's difficult for them to take a stand against Russia when Russia is the only country that stands between Armenia and their enemies to the east in Azerbaijan. It's extremely, extremely uh, concerning because they are attacking the sovereign territory of the Republic of Armenia, uh, escalating uh, this situation, uh, this theater of hostilities to an all-time high, and it's a very, very dangerous situation at the moment. The reason they want that is that is the connector between Azerbaijan and the autonomous country of Nakhchivan to Turkey and that will allow them to have a pipeline of oil. Indeed, Western leaders have been meeting recently with Azerbaijan's president to discuss how to get more of the country's oil to make up the shortfalls from Russia this winter. That may have emboldened the Azeris to make this move. I think this is about money. I think this is about uh, uh, taking those lands right now because that's where the majority of the attacks are happening. The U.S. government has so far refrained from condemning the attacks, calling instead on both parties to return to the negotiating table. There can be no military solution to this conflict. We urge restraint from any further military hostilities. We also encourage both governments to reestablish direct lines of communications across diplomatic and military channels uh, and to recommit uh, to a diplomatic process uh, to, resolve the, uh, to resolve the crisis. Armenia relies on Russian peacekeepers to uphold a 2020 ceasefire. Given the distraction of the war in Ukraine, Russia may be unable to keep a lid on the hostilities here. That runs the risk of pulling Iran into the conflict, which moved troops to the border on Monday, saying it would not stand for any change in Armenia's territorial borders. While Azerbaijan desperately seeks a path for its oil to the west, many Armenian Christians see something deeper with the current conflict. I believe this is a spiritual attack. This is a spiritual battle that has been stirred up uh, against them. So pray for the strength and the faith and that the gospel will continue to go forth here in Armenia and that it will go forth in these countries that are attacking because that is the only way we'll have peace is in Jesus Christ. I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News.